Thank you for having me. My name is Tara McFadgen, and I'm here to talk about putting cameras on all the stairs here in Hamilton. To start off, this is a personal alarm keychain. Right now, this is the only line of defense we have when we're on the stairs. You pull the button, an alarm goes off, and it stops when the button's put back in. On December 13th of 2021, at 10.30 in the morning, on the third flight of stairs while I was working out, a man I do not know pushed up against me, pulled up my clothes, and attempted to rape me. He might have got punched in the face, but I'm the stupid one for not bringing a keychain with me. It is not enough. I come to you today in three parts. First, I come to you as a woman. When I first started my campaign to get cameras on the stairs, I brought Kleenex, thank you. <laughs> when I first started my campaign to get cameras on the stairs, I started with a paper campaign, a uh, paper petition, and it was surprising to me how many women had the same experience of being brushed against inappropriately, being catcalled, being threatened, or being chased. I am not an isolated incident in Hamilton on the stairs. Although I always carry a backup keychain so that whenever I run into somebody, they have one as well, there shouldn't be an expectation that we have that in one hand and illegally carrying coyote spray in the other hand, hoping that one day we don't have to justify illegally using it. Secondly, I come to you as somebody who lives in Hamilton, who pays taxes, and who votes. When my case was being explored by the detectives, they looked for everything, including cameras on the buses, because that's public transportation. But so are the stairs. So to the councillors who reached out to me back in email and said, yes, this is a problem, that means more to me than you know. To the councillors who reached out to me and said there aren't cameras or there aren't stairs in my ward and directed me to the wards that do, that doesn't mean that the people who didn't elect you to your position don't use them. I work out on one side of stairs, but I, work, I, I commute home in a different ward. This is not a ward issue. This is a Hamilton issue. Lastly, I come to you as a person with a disability in Hamilton. I have Stargardt's disease, which is a form of macular degeneration, and I am legally blind. Description of the perpetrator. White man, close to my height, in black clothes, and an orange face mask. Go get him. What color were his eyes? I don't know. How old was he? I don't know. Uh, is there anything else that you can say about him? No. Luckily, I got out of it physically unscathed, but if the situation had ended worse for me, that would be the same description. So does Hamilton have an obligation to protect the vulnerable people that don't have a choice but to use the stairs? What it boils down to is that I'm not a politician. If you were to ask me where the money's coming from today, I couldn't tell you. I just know there's a need. For the last 420 days, it has felt like I have been losing, and I'm just asking you to not let people like this win. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Tara, for your courage in appearing today, and I am sorry that you had that experience. We have a delegate, or a councillor, who would like to ask you some questions. Sure. Thank you. Councillor Nan and, and Tara, please take your time when you're responding. Councillor. Thank you, through you, Chair, and thank you so much, Tara, for coming in and uh, having to recount your story. Uh, I just acknowledge the ongoing impact of the trauma of the incident and having to retell it. Um, so I'm one of those councillors who you reached out to, um, and we replied. And through you, Chair, my question to you is, if it was up to you to design the infrastructure to be supportive for physical activity of all Hamiltonians to prevent this from ever occurring again, what would those staircases need to look like for you? Um, I haven't had an issue with any of the lighting. Um, initially, I reached out um, last summer, I believe, before the election, and one of the councillors I talked to was talking about redoing the lights as well, but I didn't find that to be an issue at all. Uh, there needs to be there needs to be cameras. There was, there, was a, there was a sex worker who was attacked, and there's still frames of him. I don't know much about the security cameras. I don't know um, if that's a, a high-quality camera or if that's one that's you know subpar, but there's still frames of this man who attacked the sex worker. If we could have cameras installed that don't need to be monitored all the time, they're, they're uh, reactionary, they don't need to be monitored all the time, but they can be pulled up when we need to, to solve cases. That would be what I would like it to look like. Thank you. Councillor, please. Thank you. Through you, Chair. So um, cameras for sure. 
um, and, and sometimes on university campuses where they've also had to endure having to redesign safety uh, right into the infrastructure of campuses, especially as it related to remote bus stops, uh, remote parking lots, and the long walk between campus and, and uh, transit uh, access points. Some of the recommendations that have come from those years of work have included panic buttons that uh, enable direct line emergency supports and flagging it in the system. In your experience, has that come up at all in either from your preference or those who you've been working with on this issue? Uh, after, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Tara. Um, after I got out of the situation, I didn't even make it to the bottom of the stairs. I was 11 seconds after the attack and I was on the phone with 911. I don't see a panic button doing any different than that. Yeah. I can see it being just as effective as what I had done. Thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Uh, Any further Sorry. questions of our delegate? 